Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Your Move TCG. Here I am donning my gay apparel, but joining me today is your favourite Joe and I, Joe McDonald. Thank you, Joe. Hey, everyone. Hope you're having a, a good good time and uh, looking forward to the Christmas period. Uh, we're here today to review the uh, year of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, so it's been a long, long New year. New Zealand edition. Yeah. New Zealand edition, for sure. Um, it's been a long year. It dates back all the way to Adventure, and now we're in a, uh, I guess, a tier element. It most certainly Uratory. has been an adventure. It has been, yeah. So uh, we have... Uh, Keza put out a poll, I think it was last week. Um, we had the results for that poll, uh, the best and worst of the year. Um, we're also going to go into the product tier list of the year, uh, voted by you guys as well as our own opinions on it, and we'll cap it off with the door list of the year in New Zealand. The important stuff. The big stuff. The big stuff. So, first of all, we have best New Zealand content creator of 2022. But yeah, we had quite quite a few like single entrants, a lot of new new faces in here. Like um, Tacky Timmy's have been putting out a lot of good content and deck profiles this year, all the way from down south in Dunedin. Um, Ados Gaming, he's moved over to Digimon, but it was a great watch while he was there. Uh, Team Dicejar, holy crap, Dicejar, best best stream best in stream. New Zealand, best stream by far, cleanest stream, uh, great commentary. Uh, like you know, just the whole setup is is, is really good. Um, One so, PM yeah, every out. Saturday, Greg, exactly. fantastic! Like holy crap, how do you not end up streaming more events in New Zealand? I do not know. Anyway, we'll move on to the top five. Coming in at number five, we have Cardspot NZ, and he does some great openings. He's always there. He's always opening a new product. He even drops back and opens some old product, breaks those starlights. He, he's, a, he's an awesome guy, and he also has a pretty good site, uh, Cutspot. Certainly does, especially if you're looking for older and obscure stuff. But yeah, thank you, Cutspot, for bringing us like, some of the best case breakings and like in New Zealand. It's been fantastic. Speaking of breakings... Yeah, um, we've got some uh, newcomers on the list. Yeah, we've got a joint fourth place here, taken up by Skiggs Cardboard and Dratini Mew. So uh, Skaze Cardboard has uh, come around this year. He uh, focuses very much on openings. Um, we've seen a lot of hype from him. He's, as you said, he was very raw. Um, and when when he opens uh, those hype cards, he definitely jumps out of his seat and you can feel the hype. Um, I find myself on the couch watching him on my phone. And when he hits that starlight, you definitely feel that hype. I, l- I love the anticipation he builds up just by having regular smoke breaks as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure um, and uh, Dratini Mew I'll let you talk about Dratini yeah um, you're not too aware of him but um, gentleman by the name of James Hayward from down in Christchurch there um, really passionate he opens a lot of a lot of product not just Yu-Gi-Oh Digimon mm-hmm. One Piece everything as well his um, you've got to stick around for his food and drink reviews <laughs> those I, are I have watched a few of those and they are good solid gold but um, moving into third place now, um, certainly, yeah, a well Zark- known character. <laughs> well known char- character is a very good descriptor of him. It is Zarkdick. And I have to shout out, he does some really good tin openings. Um, always very descriptive, always, um, you can feel the emotion in them, uh, and, and the drama of opening the tins. So, yeah, Zarkdick, I mean, bring out some more content. Uh, that's the one thing I will say is, uh, I haven't seen anything new for a wee while. Maybe you should uh, get back into it a bit. Uh, but he, he, well like, deserved third place. Yeah, he's like the Michael Bublé of Yu-Gi-Oh tins. Tins only roll <laughs> around once a year, and then like Dratini, uh, sorry, Dratini, me, and Zarkdick like just climbs out of his cave and so, opens uh, a tin, crawls back in. <laughs> see you next year. Yeah, <laughs> that, that and, explains his aesthetic. But anyway, second place. Second <laughs> place. <laughs> And this was a close one. There was a lots of votes, uh, and it literally came down to a couple of votes. Uh, so it is your move, TCG. So Keza Doyle taking out second spot. And what can I say? The amount of content you put out each year is nuts. The amount of uh, deck lists that you put out weekly, insane. As well as just general videos. Your review of OC was awesome. I, I watched that the other day again because it's just so it was so cool. Um, so yeah, congratulations. I mean. I think we had a few pity votes for the number one spot, but 
Um, but I'll introduce yeah. this one. Um, yeah, this is a this is a really well deserved first spot. They were definitely putting up some of the bit best like sort of long form content, especially on like say you're driving to Nelson to Blenheim for some reason. Mm. But yes, first place we have the face downs, Joe. Yeah, I mean, thank you very much, everyone, for the votes um, and recognizing us as the best content creators of 2022 in New Zealand. But sadly, we are no more. Um, but what a journey it was! I mean, I was with them for a year. Uh, we ended up commentating uh, OC. We um, put out, for the most part, weekly podcasts, and it was a really enjoyable time. So. Yeah. And that Dunedin regional as well that you guys commentated that was fantastic too. Oh yeah, it was it was good good fun. But yeah, well done indeed. Face downs, number one for content creation in New Zealand. Beautiful. Moving on to the next section, it's more of a a bit of a joke I'll say. Well, it's not a serious sort of a section. Joke is um, right. Yeah, and that's the worst content creator <laughs> of 2022. Um, I think Kez put this one in there just. As, as, a as a as a as a as a yeah, bit of Christmas jest, a ribbing, if you will. <laughs> but, um, we did we did have a lot of singular votes. Um, there was a, almost, yeah, there, 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 your move TCG ma- managed to make it on this list as well. I know who you are. And James McIntyre, just James McIntyre, yeah, yeah. Uh, New Zealand New Year memes two point Yeah, there's a few names, uh, but overall, and <laughs> this nice one here actually, no bad content. Uh, that's 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 in the Christmas spirit. Yeah, except there is bad content, and that was undeniably you Z she posting. If you yeah. have, not, if you've not experienced him, just like go. His name's on the screen now. Go give him a search in the Yugo New Zealand group, and you'll find some Post. non non context gold. It's great. Yeah, but at the same time, I will give him some credit. He did predict a few reprints this year. Um, I remember he he predicted like a, a Luba being reprinted again in Ghost from the Past, and everyone was like, "No, you know, it won't be." Po-. And then, boom, it was there. And there was a couple of other ones where you know he he did get it right. So, but you're right. There was a many out of context posts, many Mystic Mind posts. Yeah. Yeah, diversify your content. <laughs> yeah, it's great. How's it going, everybody? Greg here from Team Dice Jar, creator of the Team Dice Jar channel and uh, owner of Dice Jar Games in Dunedin. Um, just making this video to say a quick Merry Christmas and have a Happy New Year. See ya. For our, uh, next, cat- our next category, though, Best New Zealand, huge. Best Yu-Gi-Oh! New Zealand Admin or Mod. Mm, now, this one's big, but only for a few people, I'd say. Uh, most of us kind of don't really mind too much. But the top two are definitely in a, in a big fight for this. But we will start with number five. And that um, is Eats Kennedy. Eats Kennedy, um, representing the North yet again. Um, the North are very vocal in this posting, actually. Mm. So, yeah, it's it's great to see their sort of representation there. But good on Eats. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, do, does his job as an admin. Uh, keeps, tries to keep the page as clean as possible. And yeah, uh, moving on to number four, we have uh, Mr. Card Merchant himself, Wilson uh, Yip. Yeah, doc, Dr. Card Merchant himself, right, Wilson doctor. Yip. But yeah, um, yeah, he's he's been a bit, big part of like sort of reviving like, ha- I think the Hamilton competitive scene, at least like bringing it back to form. Moving on um, after handing off the reins to Marshall, moving on up to West City, but as well as keeping order in those places, just keeping the general order and the vibrance um, of Yu-Gi-Oh! New Zealand up. So thank you very much for that, Wilson. Doing a bang-up job. And uh, coming in at number three is go on, me. Go on. Yeah, Joe McDonald, once again. Yes, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know if I deserve this. I, I do do a little bit on the page, but I run mainly... I think this is probably maybe some Palmy players voting for me uh, for running the Hobby League for the year, potentially, but... Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for the uh, vote to third place. Second place, though. This is the big one. This is the one that the, the two people that really care about the title going at it. Indeed, it and is. Second place is Liam Gill. Liam Gill. Which means first place, we have Mac Harris, top yep, number uh, one admin. And, I mean, these two, Liam, you're just going to have to uh, up your game for next year to take Mac out. Mac, uh, well done. Uh, you, yeah, you do a fair bit for the page. You keep it safe from the scammers. He updates the uh, 
the untrusted trader list a fair bit and keep keeps everyone aware and in the loop. So yeah, yeah, well quite, yeah qu- quite a visual back and forth in both the Yuga New Zealand group and the auction house as well. So yep, yeah, right on Mac, well deserved as well, as well as the Graydon as well. He does a lot of Graydon stuff for uh, everyone in Yu Gi Oh New Zealand community. So yeah, big ups. Well, meanwhile Liam's just out there barbecuing Eldritch cards. So and we thank him for it. We thank him for it. Merry Christmas, everyone, from the real best admin. I hope you all have a safe and happy Christmas, except for you, W. Next up, we have the best and worst meta decks of 2022 for any reason. That reason could be the favourite, absolutely love them, pet deck, or subsequently the worst. You just hate versing them, or whatever. Or maybe you've built the deck yourself, and you just have not had a thing, and you just want to put a knife in the back of that deck. Yeah, so I mean, we saw lots of single votes uh, for things like Golden Lords, so your Eldritch players out there, Cash Chira, won't be saying that for long. <laughs> um, and who else have we got? We got Zark Turbo Pen, I don't know who that is, but whatever. Um, I think we even got a Damien Lin deck in there somewhere. Uh, yeah, Pacifus so. Adventurer Control. That's the one. So Damien we actually Special. Had a, Damien Special. We have a joint top. Uh, so in fifth place, there's three decks that are all uh on the same amount of votes so we had branded dragons and sprite so that's dragon as in dragon link or bestial dragons um yeah i mean those three decks have been around a lot this year what do, what do you think is uh yeah like they're definitely like mainstays of the tournament scene if you go into a big ones like you're not going to see the representation in numbers but to be honest i'll verse branded dragons and sprite all day every day over some of the other decks in this list oh yeah yeah, I'm kind of surprised that um, some Sprite may have been that low. We saw a lot of players like playing the deck this year, obviously, and a lot of people enjoying the deck, um, myself mm. included. I quite liked playing Dragon uh, Sprite. But then again, I did vote in this, and my vote went elsewhere in the top five. <clears throat> so moving on, we got uh, number four, and that's Sword Soul. Yeah, Sword Soul is a very, it's a very weird deck. Like I started off the year playing Sword Soul, and got some very average results, like I got 9th, 10th, 11th, and started slipping down, but I was always in the top 16 and stuff. But like, mm. yeah, I think Sword Soul, it's powerful, but not at the same time. It's it's yeah, such an it's odd position deck. Kind of like the Satella Knight of the format is how I've always seen that deck. It's, it does what it needs to do. It's consistent, but like the end like the end result of what the deck can do is it's just not quite there compared to things like your... Um, your Telements, your Sprites, your, mm. even your Branded can kind of put up a, a board that's like a bit more threatening with a Branded and Red or something in the back row. Uh, this kind of just sets up a couple of negates and something that pops a few cards. Like, it, it's good, and it always gets there, mm. but eh. It'll, pump, it'll punish an average or lower hand, but anything mm. above that, that rises above average, yeah. is enough I mean, to take it out. The one thing it used to do relatively well was like, it could break a board apart pretty good going second but now with like the bestials in the format you've seen it drop off a little bit um and then we'll move on to oh actually there is a joint here for we'll call this joint third and second but we will only talk about one of the decks (laughs) let's talk about well one of them is flounderies does not deserve to be there go away flounderies players yeah we'll talk about this one a bit more draco slayer my (laughs) favorite there this is because actually quickly become my favorite deck of mm. the year and like who would who would have thunk back in like pepe format that like pendulums would be people's favorite deck oh yeah i mean i really like this deck too I, I picked this deck up on on release i i, I had all the cards waiting for it so i had my ulti ignisters like sorted out just before it came out and it's super fun. Like I, I haven't actually got to play it all that much because I've been running the hobby leagues a bit more. But like I, every time I have played it, I've enjoyed it. Um, it puts up. It's like a. It's like a. You know, you get your opening hand going first, and you just kind of have to work it out how to get the your end board. Yeah. Uh, and you can make some creative cool end boards as well as just keep boring. You know, set up a omni hmm. or something. Uh, whereas going second, you've got Ignister, which is like one of the coolest cards in the game, artwork wise and effect wise. So, yeah, like, like yeah. It, it, harks from, it harks from a day where like every card had a soft once per turn on it, and when you include like mm-hmm. Revolution Dragon to be able to revive it and keep bringing it back, like 
It's so, so just cool. like, wait, you're special something from deck again. What, you're spinning cards again? What? I think you can like loop an Ignister effect at least four or five times plus a turn. It, it, it's pretty fun. Um, so we'll, we'll lump this one in there. Flo and we'll give you a little. Yep, you're annoying. Okay, move on. Um, number one. Um, quite rightly so, I do believe um, Tear Element. While it's not my favourite deck to play, it's unquestionable the best competitive deck of 2022. However, and you pointed this out, where is Prank Kids and where was Hulk Turbo? Hulk, yeah. Because that like, was this year. They, they was this year. Like Adventure Prank Kids was like rampaging the thing. Uh, tournaments at the start of the year. Hulk mm. Turbo decks, just being able to get to Hulk or Firebrax and then being able to loop Rose Dragons for a bunch of synchros was insane and like even tri brigade didn't even get a mention on this list oh. and tri brigade was huge it was a great yeah, i mean it's tri luralisk as well yeah i mean there was so many decks that like i feel like people may have forgotten about because we're living in the now um whereas you know before like the like prank kids was the start of the year so like it's so long ago that people probably have just let that slip from their memories so Moving on from that, we have now got to go into the section of the worst decks of 2022. So, as you wah, said, it's wah. for any reason. Could be for the fact you just hate it. Could be the fact that you just think that deck sucks. Um, and this one here was quite tightly contested. Not really. There was one that definitely took out the uh, most votes by far. Um, and for that reason, we'll move into number five, which was uh, branded, a joint one. Yeah, Branded and Exorcist Sister, actually. Hmm. Which so br branded I understand. Uh, Exorcist sister, yeah, you might just not like having uh, you know being interrupted when you're trying to play the game. Uh, I'm interpreting this result as branded is the worst deck because a handful of people didn't like playing against it. Exorcist hmm. sister, I think, is not so much people hate playing against it, but more like maybe they bought into it at a hype and it didn't really perform as expected and things. So that's why they think it's the worst meta deck. Hmm. Also, it could just be the fact that they might not like wifeys. Anyway, moving on, we have uh, Sprite coming in now at number four. Um, interesting, considering it was kind of quite high up in the best decks as well. Uh, I think the reason for this is the Sprite combo is very boring to watch. Like, so if you're playing against Sprite, hmm. it is quite boring. To play that combo is quite fun. So, yeah. We um, go to Punk. What? Punk. Number three is Punk. This is weird. I mean, I, I didn't really have much of a problem with Punk. I guess maybe people may have seen this. This might be going back up to the uh, Hulk Turbo decks, which weren't exactly a popular thing mm. with people. Um, being able to have a one-card Hulk in uh, Ziaman, uh was kind of a thing that people didn't like, so maybe that's why Punk's in third place. But other than that, I never really had a problem with it. No, neither. Uh, second place though, yeah, I understand this. Um, we've got Tear Element again, almost taking up two slots. Yeah, uh, this is. Uh, I can understand this one. This this deck can go to time, like no other deck ever has before. I, I and I think uh, the between this and first place as well, like the similar thing is both decks have the ability to play on mm. your turn. And not only that. They take an age in your turn. It like they, they, they you you get to a point where you're sitting there and you go, Oh, oh well, it's my turn. Oh, okay. Then you like make your plays again. But you can actually like forget because so many things happen. They confuse like, I don't know what, four or five times during your turn. Hmm. It's your turn, man. Let me have my turn. Please. And yeah, uh, yeah, the absolute nugget in this bucket of feasts is Fluwanderies. Now, I can't fault the deck for doing exactly what it does, but when mm. it does exactly what it does on either player's turn, that's where I'm just like, Ugh. I mean, I've never heard the word nor summon so many times in a duel. Mm. Oh, no more. Effect no more. Effect no more. Our barrier statue and pen pass. Yeah, I don't think the deck would be <laughs> as bad as Adv if Advent of Adventure did not gain five hundred life points for some stupid reason. Some stupid, stupid reason. Because at least then they'd just be stalling out and not have like a searchable life gainer. But yeah, oh, it's, yeah. Part, it's part of their engine. They just go no, 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 no. 
and I, this is no hate towards Flanderese players. Like, you know, it's a good deck. It yeah. will get you great competitive results. Um, we saw even at OC, like young Levi take, took the deck to a top. Like, mm. so it, it's, it's a good deck. It's just, we don't like you. Hello, Yu-Gi-Oh players. It is me, Ruben, your organized play manager for New Zealand Yu-Gi-Oh. And I just wanted to wish everyone a happy holidays and a great new year. Uh, and I am so excited to see what 2023 can bring for all of us. And, um, yeah, I guess happy holidays and enjoy opening all your product that your family default got as a gift because they don't know what else to get you. This one's big. This one was the best event of 2022. And it was so good to have um, so many events back post the uh, pandemic period in New Zealand. Um we don't like this this is our first like I, I guess clean year of just event after event after event uh yeah. by the end of it it was back to pretty much how it was years ago yeah so, I, I don't think i've ever traveled so much in a year for Yu-Gi-Oh. i've been like dunedin invercargill because of a flight delay i've been to yeah. christchurch i've been to wellington i've been to hamilton multiple times mm. and stopped my car crazy with the doors and, and- unlocked you also had a spa bath in Palmerston North, so... Oh, yeah, that was something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was something. Um, so there are some honourable mentions here, like the Dice, Star, Dice Jar Regionals, <coughs> sorry, uh, with myself and Ellie on commentary. That, that was a great event. Um, We've I think got that multiple. was 50-plus players. Um, the Palmerston North 3v3 was the first time, biggest event we've had in Palmy, I think, in, in, in its history almost. There was 50 players that showed up to that event. Um, yeah. But anyway, moving into the top five biggest events, and they were really just the biggest attended events as well. So we'll start off with the TCG Collector Cup. Yeah, which um, me and Kalisha had the privilege of commentating that. You can check that out in like the video linky things. Over there somewhere, yeah. But yeah, but, um, um, yeah. Yeah, great event, great format. Like, yeah, any event I find in the South Island is just chill as heck. It's a different beast from North Island. It is. Go. But and people play creative decks down there. Like, it's it's not like so much. You're not forced in just to watching like twenty five tournament mirror matches throughout a tournament. You can sit back and watch Crystal Beast play against Crystal Beast Abyss Axis. zombies. Cyber yeah, dra- like, Cyber Dragons. They've got a couple of Cyber yeah. Dragon players down there. Thank you. It's for just you boys. Uh, yeah. It's just a very cool like environment down south. I I very like I enjoyed my time in Dunedin as well for that reason. Like everyone was playing different decks. It wasn't boring. You went to Hobby League every week and you played against different things. People saw Hobby League as a hobby. Yeah, I mean, who to thunk it, eh? Like, oh my god. <laughs> and uh, number four, uh, we'll flip to the other side of the country, and that's the Auckland Regional in January, which had seventy plus players. Yes, um, and I had the displeasure of coming ninth place at that thing. First re- first regionals for me in like almost like four years, and mm-hmm. like uh, because I, obviously I've been doing other things. Yeah, um, but yeah, uh, first regionals and like ninth place out of seventy plus players. I thought I did all right, and that was the start of my love hate relationship with Sword Soul. But yeah, um, mm. gr- really great event indeed. Um, really, um, great great venue as well. Actually, it was in the it was sort of in the middle of a place that Yu Gi Oh players dare not tread. But like, um, or Auckland doesn't that matter? Uh, but yeah, it was actually yeah re- really good event, really well run. Yeah, and I think. It was so cool to see a regional in New Zealand with those like high numbers. I mean, people, if you're, anyone's watching from overseas, like you have to realize like our country has the same population as some American cities, so like, or even less than a lot, you know. Hmm. Um, so having seventy odd people show up to an event in New Zealand is that's that's crazy high. Pretty good. Pretty pretty um, pretty good. Number three, we have the South Island uh, Championship, which I believe you went to, did you? Uh, no, I did not make the oh, North I, atten- yeah. I, I attended the North Island one, but yeah, South Island Championship taken out by little James English, who I believe also topped OC as well. Mm. Um, playing Tear Element with no field spell. So I don't Man. know whether that says anything about the power of Tear Element cards just by oh, themselves was, or his skills. Was that the one where he played? Did he play Virtual World on that one? Oh, yes, he won that oh, with Virtual yeah, World. It was OC. OC. OC was the Tear Element, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah my bad. Yeah. But yeah. uh, no, that was a great event from what I could see, like uh, hosted by a TCG Collector. Uh, he always seems to uh, put on great events down in Christchurch. Mm. Um, and, and the Christchurch scene is definitely one of the biggest scenes in Yu-Gi-Oh! in New Zealand. Uh, it's grown massively, like, uh, and may it continue. Um, 
in second North place, Island we have North Island Championships hosted by Card Merchant. So, yeah, the, again, the, this was again, this was huge as well. This is like 111 players, I believe. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Unfortunately, I missed out on it because I uh, I can't remember. I may have been having a baby or something. Yeah, I think at the time. Did you? <laughs> Yeah, around then. I think it was around June time, and it was like a couple of days near the due date of the baby, so I couldn't attend that event, unfortunately. But there was 111 players, and it was so cool to like even just sit at home and like see the picture of like 100 Yu-Gi-Oh players in New Zealand in the same spot at the same time playing the game. Um, great event. Uh, who took it out again? It was um, David Crystal. Oh, David Crystal, of course. Yeah, yeah, with uh, Branded. Um, so yeah, that was a huge event. Awesome yeah. to see. But speaking of big events. The only event that could top it on this list, the Oceanic Championships, and, and, and they what were event it was. Oh, like, it's so good! Like uh, shout outs to Geek Culture for putting it on. Shout outs to the players for turning up and just supporting such a huge event. Shout out to the Face Downs again, rest in peace, for like doing the commentary on that. Yeah, I mean, we uh, very much like enjoyed the commentary, like having a Konami stream like an official stream first time in new zealand maybe first time even in the southern hemisphere i don't remember there being one in any of the ycs's in australia either so like it was just huge having that coverage in little old new zealand and it, it definitely brought a bit of extra like spark to the event uh, a bit more hype to the event bit people knowing that they've been yeah they've known they've been watched by like thousands of people like there was uh, people like pack and fafa and Critiquing, the plays, crit critiquing critique the plays, critiquing the commentary. Oh my god, um, yes. <laughs> so yeah, I Be mean, it was, on us. it was nerve wracking. I mean, I, I only found out kind of that morning how big of a stream it was going to be, uh, and they were definitely critiquing every everything I said. But I, I, I definitely, I feel like I did ease into it in the end and and, and settled in. But um, yeah, great event. Seeing so many Australians over here it was was awesome yeah for like once we actually appreciated a large number of australians mm. <laughs> no but in all honesty they were they were some pretty cool guys i everyone i spoke to who from, from australia was super nice um so yeah like um and always obviously we saw our own new zealand player dino take it out so undefeated yeah, by the way undefeated, undefeated. 14 now merry christmas and good luck to everybody going to sydney holy crap yeah so Moving on to the next section, uh, is the best team of uh, 2022 for any reason. Uh, teams uh, used to be, I feel like, bigger back in the day. We're seeing a bit of a resurgence for teams coming back again this year with um, teams like Team Chaos and others coming back. Mm. Uh, but we'll move to the number five team. Shout out as well, unfortunately, to uh, D Dice Jar, just missing out by one vote here. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. honourable mention, Team Dice Jar, by the way. Yeah, so uh, in number five, we have Team Mr. Cows. Um, to be honest, I yeah. haven't seen a lot of them this year. But uh, uh, Christchurch team, uh, the players tend to be, they t tend to take the game quite seriously, so it's good for them. They do put out the occasional video as well, if you want to check them out on YouTube. And yeah, um, they're sort of a cross-code team as well. Not only do they play Yu-Gi-Oh, but I believe a couple of their players also play Fab as well. So it's really nice that they do well across both, both games. It's brilliant, really. And in number four, we've got the uh, great Dunedin team of Team Tacky Timmies. Uh, this includes players such as Troy Reeves, uh, Roger Yang. Uh, who else have we got in there? We've got we've Earl, Earl in there as we've well. We've got Paku. Uh, Paku. Yeah, so big like, man Paku. Yeah, some, some big Dunedin names down there. Huge uh, units. And they are um, titans of the game <laughs> in Dunedin. <laughs> great chat. Um, great great hanging out with them. Shout out to Troy's sister. Um had to be said. <laughs> Had to be said. But yeah, um, go check them out. They, um, they're they quite good with their video coverage as well. They always cover their decks after an event. So yeah, and really great thought. Uh, this is, again, just showing the opinionated, how strongly opinionated they are up in north there. And this is for Team SR TCG or Shadow Realm TCG. That is the Whangarei Beast team. Number two. Uh, the old, Probably the oldest team on this list. Uh Team Chaos, uh, which who isn't in Team Chaos? That is the question. Yeah, it seems to be like an amalgamation of uh, like a bunch of good players in New Zealand. But you know, if you've got an eye like Wilson does to spot talent, good on him. Uh, Collected and, together. And, yeah, and we've seen um, a lot of success by, by those guys this year. Um, 
they don't hold a torch to the number one spot, but like they, they do pretty well. Very um, few do. Very few do. They are literally a spot on the butt cheek of number one. And what a butt that, cheek it is. This is New Zealand's ass, isn't it? Team Hoon Hay. <laughs> oh, what oh. a team. Oh. Uh, probably not well known for their competitive success, <laughs> but very well known for their um, commercial success, uh, which is <laughs> Team Hoon Hay. They are <laughs> a great team from Christchurch. Well, it depends um, what you, like competitive sort of, in Yu Gi Oh! No. Competitive in Sinking Bears, yes. You will not top that team. Like. <laughs> They are a mess. And uh, they've been around for a wee while now. They do put out some pretty decent content. They, and to be fair, they do pretty well at some events. Like we have um, Andrew Dudson and stuff who does very well for them. Um, and yeah, they, they are super entertaining. Like if you ever get the time to go check out the Team Hoon Hay channel, go ahead. Um, you'll be entertained and may it continue for them. Indeed. Long love. Long love. So congratulations, Team Hoon Hay. You are the number one team in New Zealand for 2022. <laughs> Merry Christmas, have a happy new year from uh, James from Team Hoon Hay. Uh, let's just get this Yu-Gi-Oh in. Next year, 2023, best year. Sure. Now we'll move on to the products of the year. I think uh, Joe and I should go through and Give our opinions. Yeah. Give our opinions. Um, so, Dimension Force, where are we sticking this? I, I, I personally think slap it in the sea. Yeah, I mean, it brought out Furions. That's, a, that's an archetype. Yeah. Battles of Chaos, uh, low C. B, high C. It's definitely yeah. better than. Definitely Slightly better. better. Than, yeah. than Dimension Force. Dabble, I want to slap that straight a. to A. Yeah. Like, the high end cards it's aren't worth too much, but. Like, it's a great but it was a great DLC. Like it was awesome. Great DLC for Power of the Elements which clearly gets S tier. Uh, uh, Crystal Beast, I'll put that in B or A, I'd say. Like it, it had Ash reprints. Um, I, I, I think we're gonna put it in B purely because like it is huge nostalgia bait and it's still a great product, but at mm. the same time it's not competitively the best compared to um, I would, so, I would almost put that in S, almost. Like, almost? Yeah. Oh yeah, I think I'd, I'd agree with like low S as well, purely because yeah. like we mentioned about at the time when it came out, it was meta warping, and mm. Dark World. I want to put low A. Yeah, low A, maybe high B. I'd say like just above the Crystal yeah. Beast. They're, they're very even. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd say. Like, it's not to say like you're in B tier, you're a bad product. No, this is mm. B for bokeh. Bokeh, yeah. Um, <laughs> bokeh. <laughs> bokeh. Um, um this one here wah, yeah, wah, wah, like, wah. i think those two sets like the only redeeming factor about them is you get a dice <laughs> i'm buying a 30 dollar product were they 30 For a dice For yeah a about dice. around about that yeah um the, looking back now the hidden arsenal one like the the reprints in that were things like um Gildrain, and that now has been reprinted so many times that there's just no reason to buy this product anymore so sorry any stores out there that are stuck with it um yeah, it's not consider, great. consider donating it to a children's hospital this year. <laughs> Help them move along to the next stage of their afterlife. Um, Grand Creators, um, A tier? High A tier? Uh, uh, I'm going to put it in B just because deck building sets generally... Uh, I, I, okay, A for, a for meta impact, B yep. for like value. Um, but yeah, a, a for meta impact. Yeah. yeah. Like... It's a, it's a real tie between Dabble and thing. I think Dabble yeah. seems just better now because of where we are, but at the time when this came out, this was huge. So these two, are, mm. I feel, are very interchangeable. Uh, we already the worst know what, set. We already yeah. know what you think about that. Oh, so bad. Cool. Um, what is this? Ta Tactical Masters, Masters. now? Uh, I'll put that in B, maybe. Like, it brought out, like, some decent archetypes. Like, value-wise, it was... I'd say all deck building sets value wise will be D tier, just so just so you know. Mm -hmm. Um but as far as like viability, like yeah, B. Um uh, Brothers of Legend Crystal Revenge. Now we did not dis this did not get any votes or discussion, so I think that no. sort of just adds to the loop especially when it being a product, yeah. like the lukewarmness reception of it. Like, I don't know, I reckon around high C, maybe a low B, because something about the brothers sets where like I open them and and like they're all shiny. You feel like you're getting a little bit more value, even though you're not. 
Um, and it did have some really good reprints in there. Hmm. So probably low C. Oh, like, like, sorry, high C. I would not leave it in. Yeah. Oh, high C, low B. Like, again, yeah. it can go either there. It's definitely not a tactical masters, but, you know, if you're super casual and you see Crystal Beast and you know you can buy a pack and it's all shiny cards. Mm. Yeah. Um, Mavens, I want to put A. Yeah, A. Yep. A, like, it's, it's not, it's... It's a bigger, it's a bigger buy-in. Like you do need to spend more money, but like, it's so many good cards. Yeah, for 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 its impact on the matter, definitely a. Eh? Uh, Megatons. Yeah, just yeah. above. I would say probably even bring it above Grand Creators, just for the amount of decent reprints it had in it. Um, Defo. But yeah, all tins are usually good. Uh, it goes it goes, it goes from the past. Uh, probably C. C. I I, I can't put it that low purely because the because of ghost rares okay yeah the chase of a ghost rare is is yeah it's still a thing like when you pull like i mean i pulled my first ever ghost unfortunately it wasn't eye of tamias yeah. um but yeah oh, the oh, hype oh, yeah oh. the hype of pulling the ghost at least was cool yeah um i yeah i definitely have to put it below like the only thing you're chasing out of ghost from the past is a ghost rare in all honesty now mm. um brothers of chaos i think this is cool and like what we've learned from previous sets is that very few of the secret rares in Brothers of, and the Brothers or the Battles of Legend sets actually get reprinted. Like this may be your only chance to get them. Yeah. Like I in mean, the in look, the next five years. Look at previous Brother sets and look at how much the secret rares become over time as well. Like um, just small cards, like for example the um, the uh, Artemis Maiden chick, you know the Link one. Yeah. Um, if if you don't pick her up when she's like a dollar and then like all of a sudden she's his competitive play like two years down the track all of a sudden that yeah. like dollar card you picked up is a 25 buck card even like, even it, it, even even secret rare selene which i think looks better mm. than the ultra oh it like, does yeah yeah like yeah that's currently only sitting at like 20 something dollars now like that could once that selene comes to the former that can easily shoot up well mm, above the ultra sure. rare there and yeah. yeah so yeah i'm pretty happy with that yeah, that's out to your list. Do not, D, C. do not touch. C, only if you, C for curious, if you're curious <laughs> about opening this. Uh, B, as Bo you said, for Bo bouquet. bouquet. Like, starter decks, I think this is just purely a competitive thing, but like, any yeah. of these starter decks, if you see them on the shelf, buy yourself three and get yourself a new deck, that's great. Mm. A, wholeheart I wholeheartedly endorse, yeah. maybe not Grand Creators anymore. Uh, no, not anymore. But, no. defi but definitely the other three. And mm. yeah, if you see some S lying around, pick it, pick yourself up some pot. S for shit hot. Shit hot. <laughs> Hi, wishing you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from the team at Card Merchant Hamilton. And now we move on to the big one. Who is the best or favourite duelist in New Zealand for 2022? The black um, envelope, we'll, if you will. Yeah, you know, Keza, I'll let you take us through the full list of everyone who received the vote. Um, just because your name's mentioned at the bottom doesn't mean anything. It just means that you are alphabetically put there. So I'll let Def you read through. Definitely. And we received quite a number of nominations there. And it's for any reason. Like we've got Troy Reeves here. We've got some reference to a crappy heroes player from Christchurch. Um, Tash from Palms North, one of your local players there. One of the locals, yep. Yeah, we've got Ryan Butler from Blenheim. Shout outs to Ryan's house. Uh, Ruben Kruger for all of his work that he does into putting to organised play in New Zealand. Roger Yan, if you've ever hung out with this guy, he's absolutely bloody hilarious. Best looking here in New Zealand. Exactly. <laughs> Liam Garrity's mum, best looking mum in New Zealand. Mm. Uh, Brennan Gale, I believe he's the Madolce player from Dunedin. Uh, we've got Kevin Chow, Josh the hero player, Josh Lewis for his amazing performance, Oceania champs as well, go him. Uh, Jordan Grace, um, probably one of the best dragon players Link players have seen. Uh, Jameson Marriott, not sure who he is, but good on you for getting nominated. James Rondell, another Blenheim player. James Hayward, of course, Dratini Mew there. James Emsley, if you have not been on the receiving end of a Mystic Mind from him, you have not lived. Can't or, do with that anymore. Or died, <clears throat> by the way. Uh, Idris Desire as well, who I believe is the um, tournament organizer for Rotorua. Sure. Um, yep. Huggy, aka Daniel Schofield. Yeah, yeah, the return of the 2007 national champion. We've got Deli Tan, who manages uh, Shuffle and Cut Games. Damien Lin, always a favourite, whether he's like pushing his, pushing his shopping trolley of 
binders into the Holders store. Uh, Big Sebastian, don't want to see him in a dark alley. Andrew Shepard, Alan Dunkley for his efforts towards the judging teams. Aiden Wells, aka Aido. Sean Doesn't Hu. Doesn't deserve to be there, he's playing Digimon now. Yeah, strike him out. Um, Sean Hu, new import to um, the Christchurch Shoe Gear scene, and absolutely carving up. Uh, Ross Hitchens as well. Ricky Campbell, this must be the Hamilton crew voting in here. Levi for his. A huge effort, just a young guy, oh, yeah. but huge effort topping OC with Fluanda Rees. Uh Joe McDonald, there you go, mate. You get a mention. Cheeky bugger. <laughs> uh, James Hamill as well. G Man, he's up here. Eats Kennedy again. What the heck? Sorry. Christopher uh, Fohitaha, um, generally one of the nicest people in the game, in the community. Great guy. And congratulations to him as well and his partner. Uh, Liam Gill, again, best. Best admin getting a mention. Well, second best yeah. admin. Second best admin. Sorry, the people have spoken. Uh, Terry, cheers to you. Cheers to you. To you. <laughs> uh, we've got Sean Clark. Oh, wait okay. a second, actually. Here we have a one, two, three, four, Ooh, five, yes. six of you are all on the same votes here. So what we'll do is we'll compile you guys into fifth and fourth. So the people uh, have spoken. You guys are fifth and fourth. Yeah, we've got <laughs> um, Sean Clark, RJ Barclay, Marshall Stevenson, James McIntyre, Wilson Yip, all in fifth place. Connor, Man. Connor Shomkill, Cheese TCG in fourth. Andrew Dudson, fantastic performance at the TCG Collector Cup in third place. Third place, yeah. Moving uh, on to the big two now. So second place, big two. yours truly, Kazza Doyle. Oh god, yeah. the, the second poll of mine to for me to come runner up into. How <laughs> embarrassing! But I think no doubt in anyone's mind, unbelievable runner, Oceanic Championship. We have Dennis Wazowski voted the, the number Oceanic one champion, best yeah. favorite duelist of 2022. Well done to him indeed. Yeah, I mean he has won pretty much everything he's played in this year. Like he uh, has dominated every three v three here. Like he holds that record to like. Um, you know, having a hundred percent record at those. Uh, also, the fourteen and I at OC was something to watch. Like that was crazy. Um, he played pretty much flawlessly. Obviously, the final, both the players were quite shaky, and that's understandable. There's a lot of pressure in those games, but he didn't put a foot wrong, and he deserved the title. Uh, and just by getting that, he a hundred percent deserves the title of the best player in New Zealand for 2022. Uh, yeah, congratulations, Dino. So again, big thank you to Dino and a big thank you to yourselves as well for tuning in and joining us. We really appreciate you having along for this journey, this adventure, if you will, for 2002 Yu-Gi-Oh. I know I've had a great time having you on the show here, Joe. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been fun. Uh, it's been great to review the massive year that we've had. Like, there's been so many products, so many events, so many players, so many personalities, so many teams, everything. Uh, what a year we've had. Uh, here's the 2023. Um, I'm assuming that there will be another huge year of Yu-Gi-Oh ahead. Uh, and who knows, we could be back here again reviewing that next year. I hope so. I hope so indeed. But Merry Christmas, everyone. Take care and see you all in the new year. Check it. Uh, Troy from Tacky Timmy's here. Uh, just doing my bit in Kez's wonderful Christmas video he's bringing out. So from me and the rest of the Tacky Timmy's, just want to wish your brother. Happy New Year and a, a good Christmas. I hope you spend it well and pull some good cards. I know I won't because my pull rate is uh, ridiculously bad. And uh, yeah, have a good one, guys. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from Dratini Mew. Hopefully you get a bunch of cards this year and have a good one. And yeah. What's up guys, Ethan from Cardspot here. Just want to wish you and your families a very happy and safe holiday season. Hopefully you get to open some packs and I will see you bright-eyed and bushy-tailed in the new year with some fresh pack openings. Have a good one. Hey,